Hallelujah. Saints. Good morning. 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 Good um, Martin's been having some pictures up there, a lot of the activities that have been going on. Um, and Martin wants to announce some more activities. If you look inside your bulletin, to the communication card, you can respond to some of these activities. So good morning. All of these activities are on Rome, but it's another busy Summer with the Saints week. Um, on Tuesday, we have a movie at Hollywood Cinema. Inexpensive movie. I like that. Um, it's one dollar for the ticket, and it's two dollars if you want popcorn and a drink. Dogs Way Home, which is a family friendly movie, and then on Wednesday, in addition to the playthrough in the morning, in the afternoon we get to go to Beth Cochran's house for a pool pop. So all July we're going to be visiting different member homes who have pools, and we get to take a dip and pool up. Um, the last announcement is you're going to see a table in the narthex just announcing that if you want to purchase God's Work Our Hands t-shirts, please go ahead and fill out the form, write your check, or you can even hand around to solicit them. Mm -hmm. And this way we have all those fabulous yellow t-shirts. A lot of people use their year to year, but God's Work Our Hands is going to be September 11th, so we're trying to make sure our order is in time so that we can get our shirts in time. Is there anything else? Um, no, just, yeah, we had a lot of fun with Encanto. Uh, we watched the movie. We had a good fit, a fun family night and had lots of kids and lots of running around the CFC, and it was a good time. So if you would fill out your communication card, and then if you're not getting Realm, and Realm is our new church software that interacts and lets you know if you're signed up for something or lets you register for an event, then mark on the communication card. As the Realm is up to date. So we're still figuring all this stuff out. <laughs> well, glad that we can be together. And um, Alice has an announcement about... Evangelism, there's Alice, sorry. Good morning, uh, to the glory of God, uh, your evangelism team of one right now <laughs> is asking um, for one or two more people. If the jobs are not what you think they are, uh, come and see me, please. If you have some time, meetings will be at your convenience. Um, so, um, pray about it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. And Tammy, you have an announcement? Yeah. I want to let everybody know that uh, we've been very, very blessed today. We live here for a new person for quite some time now. And she has uh, found an amazing opportunity and actually is in Illinois. Uh, we are here together. Uh, we also have been blessed with interviewing and offering and, and with acceptance of a new music person. His name is Alfonso. He said it's interesting starting in August. However, he's so Yeah, so good news, uh, Doug's going to be getting the choir back together, and so you'll be hearing more about that. So again, you can sign on the communication card if you're interested in learning more about the choir or handbells or any of the musical activities. As we, this post-COVID world, we try to rebuild some of those wonderful um, um, attributes that we haven't been able to do during COVID. Okay, I think that's all the announcements, so let's take a moment with the prelude to prepare our hearts and our minds for worship.
staff are opening him a beautiful for spacious sky. <laughs> Good morning. So the last couple weeks have been talking a lot about gifts and using your gifts. So I'm going to just go off script and I think we need to give Mutual Ministry a big round of applause because they have hired three fantastic people in less than three months. So what a great way to use their gifts and talents for this church. It takes a lot to find and hire amazing people and then keep them. <laughs> so um, we really, really appreciate those uses of gifts and talents. And I'm sure if anyone's interested in being a part of that, they can find a spot for you. So uh, evangelism, mutual ministry, there's lots of places to serve. But today, I am not talking about gifts and talents. Um, I'm talking about love and peace. And one of the things that we don't do because of COVID is we don't pass the peace anymore. And I know a lot of um, those of us who have done that for a long time miss it, miss the passing of the peace. Um, but we're still called to spread peace. That's kind of the tricky thing. You know, we're not called to hug and shake hands for 10 minutes in the middle of church right now. But we are still called to pass the peace. And we're still called to share love. So I'm going to pass the peace. Ready? Switch hands. Okay. I'm going to throw balls. This is disclaimer. If you don't want the ball anywhere near you, cover your head and duck. Okay? Here we go. 
Oh, 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 where's it going? Oh, oh. Okay, so what does that one say? What's that say? It says peace. It says peace. So when we send peace out, our call is to send peace into the world. And right now there's a lot of not peace in the world. So we are called to send the peace. We are not called to determine who receives the peace. So my job is to spread peace. My job isn't to go, oh, that peace wasn't for you. It's to spread it. Guess who's in charge of who receives it? The receiver. And God. Yeah. The person who gets it, the person, God is in charge of where it goes from you. So we'll see where our peace ends up. He's probably not going to throw it during the service or anything, but that peace is probably going to end up somewhere else. Now here's some love for this side of the room. You ready? Here it comes. Duck and cover if you don't want it. Oh, 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 look at that. Yeah, so the love did not stop with our evangelism member. She shared that love and it kept going. So we don't have control and we don't need control of where our peace and our love goes. And our job is to share it. So maybe don't throw balls at people all week, but do share love and peace. And let's send that around instead of some of the other stuff that is getting shared right now. We love you and we're so glad you're here today. Our first reading is from Genesis, chapter 39, verses 1 through 23. It's in your few Bibles, uh, page 33. <clears throat> now Joseph was taken down to Egypt, and to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. He was in the house of the Egyptian pastor, that's an Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him. He made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and with him there he had no concern for anything but the food he ate. Now Joseph was handsome and good-looking, and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, Look, with me here my master has no concern about anything in the house. And he has put everything that he has in my hand. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept anything back from him except himself, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her. One day, however, when he was in the house to do his work, and while no one else was in the house, she caught and pulled a hold of his garment, saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, she called out to the members of the household and said to them, See, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. He came in to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And when he heard me, raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Then she kept his garment by her until his master came home. And she told him the same story, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you have brought among us came in to insult me. But as soon as I raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. When his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, saying, This is the way your servant treated me. He became enraged, and Joseph's master took him and put him into prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. He remained there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. He gave him favor in the sight of the chief jailer. 
The chief jailer committed to Joseph's care all the prisons, prisoners who were in prison. And whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer paid no heed to him anything that Joseph was in Joseph's care, because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made him prosper. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 66, beginning with verse 8. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say it to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your great strength is worthy. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. How the mountain has seen the works of God, how wonderful he is in his doing for all people. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot, and there we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever, his eyes he watched over the nations, let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you peoples, make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds our souls in life, and will not allow your feet to slay. The second reading is from Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you have received the Spirit, should you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their loads. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, say, Peace be in this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. If not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there. And say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe it off and protest to you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. So please be seated and... Today we're going to continue on in our story and in the life and the times of Joseph. 
And uh, we got started on this at Vacation Bible School, and I thought it would be good to go a little deeper into some of these complex issues that are brought up in this very, very ancient story. And remember, this is going back to the very first book of the Bible. And it's the story of Joseph, who's the son of Jacob. But very importantly, Jacob is Israel. And Jacob had 12 sons, and of course, Israel had 12 sons, and so those 12 sons of the 12 tribes of Israel. So this is basically part of the foundation story of the Hebrew Scriptures. And it's the last one in the book of Genesis, and it ends up uh, placing the people of Israel in Egypt. So then the most... being free from slavery, going to the promised land, as a story that comes from this. But we're going, go, jumping ahead there, so we're, we're back with Joseph. Joseph, if you remember from the first uh, message we gave on this, was the father's favorite son. He was given a special coat, a coat of many colors, or a coat of long sleeves, or whatever it was, it made everybody jealous. So jealous, in fact, that Joseph's own brothers all turn against him, and they kidnap him, and they sell him into slavery. So in part two, we learned that Joseph was kidnapped and sold into slavery. And so today, in part three, Joseph is in slavery, but things are going pretty good in the house of Potiphar until, as you heard, the story takes a turn. Three times in the chapter, though, we hear this verse, verse three, verse 21 and 24, where it says, the Lord was with Joseph, and showed him steadfast love. So in the good times and the bad times, the Lord is with him. When, when he does well, despite his circumstances, the Lord is with him. And Joseph gains the trust of his master. Joseph is given authority within the household. And then the bottom falls out. And then the accusations are made. In verse 20, it says, The master had him arrested and put into prison. Well, what happened? As you heard, Joseph, an innocent man, is put into prison. Joseph has no rights. Remember, Joseph is a foreigner in a foreign land. He has no rights whatsoever. He has no lawyer. He has no, no appeal process or anything. But today, I'm sorry to say, in our country, which we call the land of the home of the brave and the land of the free, more people are incarcerated in the United States of America than any other country in the world. This land of free is a land of high incarceration rate. The Innocence Project, which is one of the ministries that works to examine who's in jail and why they're in jail, has estimated that 4% of people on death row are totally innocent and they're waiting to be execute, executed by the state. And so this is a problem. Obviously mistakes can be made, but on death row, there should be no question of the innocence of and in the general prison population, 6% of the general prison population is estimated to be 100% innocent. The Innocence Project and their lawyers have helped free 237 people. And these 237 people have spent 3,670 years in jail. 3,670 years in jail for crimes they did not commit. They were in the wrong place at the wrong time. They had a bad lawyer. They were framed. People spoke against them and told falsehoods. And they ended up in jail and lost 3,000 years. Joseph was not alone when he's locked up. So Joseph's accusation of falsehood against them has been going on a long time. It's a very easy way to bring down a person, especially a person who doesn't have any legal rights, especially a foreigner like Joseph was. So when Joseph is accused, he's locked up. There is no safety net. And this is very often the case in our own time. Unfortunately, it's been said in our legal world, it's better to be rich and guilty than innocent and poor. In our legal system, it's better to be rich and guilty than innocent and poor. Why is that? Because a good lawyer can get a guilty person off, and a poor lawyer can get an innocent person locked up. And unfortunately, that's something that we need to address in our legal system. The other difficult topic that you've heard, of course, is that the nature of Joseph's crime was sexual in nature. And that, of course, is a taboo subject. It's difficult to talk about. 
and for years and years in our society it was covered up. It was covered up and covered up. Recently, as you know, the Me Too movement has opened doors and many people who have been accused of sexual assault or have been sexually assaulted have had their chance to speak and openly in our society. And of course, even churches were part of the cover-up. And that's a disgrace that so many times it even happened in the churches. Crimes are so often committed against the powerless, the foreigner, against women, against children. And it's terrible that, again, those who without power or good legal representation often are not heard in our legal system today. So what can we do? Well, first, we can't stand up and stand for those in need. God stands by Joseph, right? The story doesn't end here in Joseph's false accusation. Joseph, God is still with Joseph in prison. Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is near the brokenhearted. The Lord is near the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Joseph was crushed in spirit. Second, we can be a friend and we can listen to the stories of those who have faced sexual crime, those who's, who's, who have things covered up. We can listen to the victims, those that have not been believed. We can be a voice for them. We can hear what they have to say, and we can take it seriously. So we can listen and validate the stories of those who feel they're not heard. And third, we can speak up and vote. We can change some laws, and we can have a say in who our district attorney is, and we can take seriously sexual assault, which has been so often covered up in our society. The story of Joseph has hard topics. Kidnapping, slavery, sexual assault, lies and betrayal, family, family betrayal, all kinds of injustices. Joseph is in jail because of an injustice for a crime he didn't commit. And most of us cannot overcome these hardships as easily as Joseph overcomes them. Joseph is in jail for a crime he didn't commit, and still he has this deep abiding presence that God is with him. I do take comfort in Joseph's story because Joseph keeps going despite all the awful bad things that happen to him. The bad fortune, the false accusations. Joseph is an overcomer. Joseph is a survivor. Joseph is a half glass full type person. Next week we'll hear what happens to Joseph while he's in prison, and we get back to a theme that is throughout this story, which is one of dreams and prophecies and interpretation of dreams. As Joseph continues to overcome hardships, as Joseph continues to walk with God despite extremely difficult situations, and when Joseph doesn't have a voice, God is his voice, and he knows he matters to God, just like each one of us matters to God. And God knows our situations and the hardships we've been through, and God stands with us just like God stands with Joseph, because we do have a voice in God, and God hears our voice, and God stands with the brokenhearted, even in this day. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, there are so many that have been harmed and so many that have been abused, and we thank you that you hear our cries, and you hear our cries for justice. And Lord, we're also mindful of the many that are incarcerated, who are there, who are innocent, that have lost their voice. And we can give thanks for those who are advocate, for those who are falsely incarcerated, and we thank you, Lord, that your church has a voice to stand for the powerless, to stand up for those in need, and to validate the stories that need to be validated. Lord, we thank you that you love us. We thank you that together we are the people of God. And we thank you that you guide your people in this day, in this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand for our hymn of the day, In Christ There Is No Peace or Rest.
advocate ways to restore Earth's natural balance, motivate humankind to adopt lifestyles that protect and sustain the Earth. God of grace. Your Lord.